going to play your bass line. Do you recognise that? Yeah. I bought a bass, I bought two of them. I bought a right handed one which is damaged. Yeah, brand new damaged. That was 100 quid down from 219. A little bit of a bonus there. And I also bought for 40 quid was a mashed up left handed bass guitar. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, this was a mess. It was uh, strung right handedly and all sorts. I've started to sort it out. And any of you uh, into luthierism, or guitar maintenance um, it actually needs a shim underneath here to bring it up so I can get the action low enough to uh, to t start to slap like uh, Mark King. Yeah, this is my aim, and it was going to take me years. Retirement is quite a way uh, yet, but I'm uh, slowly doing it bit by bit. I'm suffering from tendonitis, yeah, which is no stranger because I get that in this hand quite a lot at work and uh, a torn muscle here <laughs> yeah that's just the way it is but i love it i love it at the end of the day when you get it right it feels good and it's a way of just escaping the bullshit at the end of the day that is it yeah so um i've got a few things to cover in this one one of those is this uh, new 10-year tire law which has come in from the 2nd of february yeah now I do not have the document, I do not have a link for you. This is a task for you to go and ask your employer if you don't, do not know. Get the DVSA uh, document because there's a lot of good information in there. It will tell you where uh, tyres over 10 years old shouldn't be fitted to a vehicle. That's the steer axles and uh, on the rears of minibuses if they're single wheels. That's the main thing. But the date has to be seen on all these tyres now they probably will tighten that up and it's all to do with the structure degradation yeah but one thing i did learn uh, was about um the the rubber now i when i was uh, at mectech years and years ago jesus a long time ago they told us that ultraviolet light damages rubber which it does if a vehicle stands ultraviolet light will get to it and then degrade the the surface of the rubber it starts to crack out yeah there are compounds in the rubber that come out when the tire is rolling so it, the compound comes out and it protects that rubber from uv light and i didn't know that if the vehicle stands up then that compound doesn't work and the tire will degrade so this is just a useless bit of information that is actually very very relevant and it does come in with the uh, dvsa documents so if you don't know go and have a look at least try and find a document that will tell you the information about it if not get your employer to to do it yeah because it's important it's an mot thing now and it is when uh, you're doing maintenance you have to spot these things tires over 10 years old off and new ones on on uh, steer axles yeah that's not second steer axles that's first steer axles because a lot of accidents happen from tires that, that burst and split open they lose control obviously it's, it's a no-brainer you, you're losing control if you lose a tire on, on on a steer axle or on the back on a minibus if it's single wheel yeah that's that's how it is but with trailers and um, uh, twin wheels and stuff like that you can have a blowout and it's okay that you still got stability yeah this is what it's all about yeah so if you don't know go and find out really really important not only for a safe, safety aspect but if you miss it or, uh, for an MOT inspection you send it there and they see it they'll throw the book at it won't they yeah um, the date has to be seen on the tyres, on any tyre now, and this includes trailers as well, even though it's, it's not as serious. Right, yes, you do get 10-year-old tyres on some vehicles, especially horse boxes. Horse boxes, yeah, listen to what I have to say, horse boxes, because they stand up for, for long periods of time, don't they? Yeah. Um, it's not your responsibility for the cost of uh, vehicles. You're just there to do the inspections, okay? And then you advise the, the customer, yeah? And then they pay for it. If they don't want to pay for it, then it's on their neck, but you have to document this, okay? Right, I, what I will do in the future, I'm now thinking about stuff that I can do for videos, um, is uh, actually talking about how you can word paperwork as well. If you're interested, thumbs up, yeah? If you're not interested, thumbs down yeah but like i'm saying words actually do make a hell of a difference and it's all about ass covering at the day and i do want to talk about ass covering a little bit later in this video so stay tuned and we also have a competition here i've got some uh, beanies bpw beanies to give away yeah but you'll have to stay tuned all right you're gonna to have to listen to me 
Right, so uh, let's kick off first of all about how naughty I've been recently. Yeah, very, very, very naughty actually. And uh, this is um, because I've uh, been doing this YouTube channel for quite a long time. I haven't read the latest or, or the uh, uh, terms and conditions because apparently uh, any freebies that I get are considered paid promotions, even if I don't get paid for doing the promotion, yeah? So we have, uh, you know, like the latest ones are the torches, you know, they're the head torch I showed you. Brilliant bit of kit, I, I wear this every day now. It's, uh, it feels weird because I've got one hand free, I'm not holding the torch, I'm, uh, <laughs> I've got a hand free to, to play with my balls, yeah? Um, but yeah, I get sent torches like this, don't I? And other bits of equipment. And uh, to be honest with you, um, if something like this costs $30, right that's uh, by the time i've uh, done five or six hours editing and filming and all that sort of thing or even longer because i still have to do the planning and the upload and all that sort of thing i'm working for two to three pounds an hour yeah so it doesn't work out this is why i'm always on the cadge i'm always on the cadge for money because uh even the uh advertising revenue that i do get which is rubbish and the patreon that i've I do have there's only a few guys still donating to me so I get a tiny amount about $50 but you guys that are donating buying me a beer thank you very much I appreciate that that is spot on it does help that does help um, some of you guys have don donated up to five beers which is like 15 quid and then they take a little bit of commission out of it yeah but it means that I can uh, just keep things ticking over yeah uh, one of those is this Mac in the background. It's quite old, and I run this a lot. It's working really hard. I, I do need to replace it at some point, but you're talking two grand for that. Uh, but what I've done in the meantime is um, chipsets, the RAM chipsets. One that failed, uh, which meant it was it was hanging and all sorts. Well, um, I got 16 gig chipsets, and one of these is faulty. It's brand new. It's faulty from Amazon, yeah. But the other one I've put in, and it's actually running all right. There's 70 quid here just for that. Um, I'll get a warranty on the other piece, and um, and then, um, well, I'll just keep going. That's all I can do is just keep lashing it up, keep changing bits and whatever. You know what we're like. If we can do it, we can do it. The one thing that is important is the workshop camera, all right? Now, this... Uh, I've probably told you about this before. This GoPro, not very good because it's the cheaper end. The lens on here is um, scratched to hell. The quality's gone down. It crashes and does all sorts. Plus, it's missing bits. Um, like, this is broken. But it's the only camera that uh, survives a workshop situation. This camera that I'm talking to is too delicate for that. There's, there's about 500 quids worth of camera there um that I'm, the one you're watching from and uh, yeah it's too delicate so i need something like this so this is an appeal there'll be an ongoing appeal i'm trying to scrape together about 500 quid now there's 1500 people uh watch this channel if you donated before don't bother but if you really want to help us out yeah just uh down below buy me a beer yeah one or two yeah it's like a couple of quid um, if I had 1,500 people give me a couple of quid, I could actually upgrade the equipment that I've got. If not, it would just make do, and you'll just have to suffer the, the quality, won't you? Yeah. Um, before, Patreon has bought me microphones, they've brought me cameras and stuff like that, which I, I use. I do use them. Uh, however, I don't make money at this. Compared to some YouTubers, which do, they make a living out of promoting products, which I don't. Yeah. But the, the, uh, the crux of the matter is, is I have to put now at the bottom here somewhere, it will come up to say that there is a paid promotion. It doesn't mean I'm getting paid for it. It's quite the opposite, actually. It's, it's one of those lost things. It's one of those lost things. But I enjoy doing it. It's a, it's a hobby of mine. And it helps people out because I try and bring out information to you, okay? Um, I know I've been a bit lax lately, but, you know, it swings and roundabouts at the end of the day. You like to hear me, and obviously we're all in lockdown still, so, you know, you're lonely and everything, and you want some company, and you want to hear me, don't you? You want to see me? Um, so, there we go, and I'm happy to, to give to you as much as I can. Yeah, um, so that's that side of it. Again, thank you very much for the people who do donate. If you want to donate, links will be below all the videos here, okay? Um, and I am, like I say, I am on, on the catch. So, um, let's get round to some very serious business now. Um, training or correctional uh, training uh, is what I need, apparently. 
uh, BPW have approached me along with another couple of companies and what they want to do is to use my influencer uh, on the ground man on man on the job to actually tell you about BPW uh, but what they're going to do is uh, they've offered me on a training course which I'm going to take up pretty shortly and then I'm going to tell you about it because there is some very important aspects to uh, having training on simple things like trailer axles. Yes, technicians do make mistakes. Yes, technicians do fuck up big time. I've seen it myself, fucking axles up because they don't know how to get a left-handed threaded nut off or they've not been aware of it and had trouble with size of shoes and getting bits and knowing where the part numbers are. It's really, really important stuff. Now, um, Mike got in contact with me a little while ago. He's uh, the UK uh, area guy. That's the UK, not the regional, but the UK is the whole region. And what he wants to do is to reach out to you guys um, with the help of me and other uh, ways of getting into getting training um, sorted out for uh, as many technicians as possible. Now, um, the difference between a guy who knows about warranties, who knows about um, how to go through processes and is trained properly and has the paperwork, it, it will be noticed by uh, certain companies, okay, because there is, um, let's say the big hire companies and some of the big distribution chains will not put their vehicles into workshops where guys have not got qualifications for. So if they've got running on uh, BPW running gear for instance they want to know that technicians have been trained and they've got the paperwork and this is what's important at the end of the day is that paperwork which I don't have I've got a axle uh, <laughs> paperwork from like 20 years ago um, I've been on one uh, session of BPW course which was about putting the hub nut locking device in now it might seem trivial to uh, to most people but we had to go through this process because a hub came off somewhere in the uk and the managers of the group that i work for decided that uh, a certain um, guys needed to be trained up so they can supervise everybody else and have pi paperwork signed off to make sure that these hub um Nut locking devices were put in place and put in properly and checked as well yeah i'm sure you've seen it on fleets uh, i've been in a situation uh, where uh, a driver got killed for not using a handbrake now um they said initially that the handbrake didn't work uh, but it did but he, he didn't apply it yeah and what we had to do was check the whole damn fleet for all the handbrakes to make sure they were operational yeah it's when something happens in one place, it affects everybody else, especially when there's a death involved, okay? Um, so you can see where I'm coming from. If you're trained and you know, then you have that extra responsibility, don't you? So, yes, I will be going on the training course and I will be asking questions. Now, this is where the giveaway competition comes in. So, I've got four beanies with BPW uh, logos on them brand new brand spanking new that i catched off uh, off bpw because they're uh, keen to uh, connect with you guys right and what i am asking you if you are either an hgv technician or trailer technician and or, or a new guy who's come into the trade somebody like that or you come across bpw axles specifically bpw axles okay I want to ask them four questions from you guys. So if you have anything at all, any question at all, which is relevant, yeah, uh, to BPW axles, then uh, comment below with that question and put question to BPW, okay. Uh, Mike will probably watch this, may answer it straight away, but I want to ask the question on video. And yes, I'm going to take a video camera to the training course and I'm allowed, yes. So it means that I can go and have a look at their factory as well. Yes. And uh, meet the trainers as well. And uh, get a job training. No, actually, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just um, it's one of these things. So um, if I get four decent questions and I use the question in the video, then you will get a beanie. Don't forget, winter's coming around again, isn't it? It won't be that long. Yeah, so I will notify you. Well, you will know anyway. You'll know anyway. Um, they are good hats. Now, where is mine? I've got one anyway. I've got one and it's, it's warm. It's warm. It's like a thin to late one, yeah? 
So that is it basically in this video. If you've got this far, it's obviously because you are interested um, and it's really, really important. I tried to put over the safety aspect of it and always follow on with the um, uh, DBSA manual, the MOT testers manual. But there's also the maintenance side of it, which doesn't just involve greasing hubs. It's also acquiring uh, parts, uh, knowing where you can get the parts from, knowing about warranty as well, which is all vitally important, and knowing where your resources are so you can get the stuff if you need it. You've seen the uh, pictures on the wall at work, which is vital because you're sort of dealing with drums, brake, it's foundation brakes and suspension at the end of the day. That's what it is, that's what the axle does. Yeah, foundation brakes, which is if it don't stop, then there are some serious questions that are going to be asked. Yeah. Um, so there's a horrendous amount of aspects involved in a trailer axle, you know, so it's a serious business, even though some guys don't think that the trailer axles are, and they might brush over it on inspection, they sometimes don't look at the right things, yeah. And the other thing I will say is I got asked by an apprentice if I could teach him about trailer inspections, <laughs> which I will do, but he doesn't have the time to do it because he's actually doing other stuff, so I will eventually come out with how to do a trailer inspection properly yeah to a standard maintenance and safety standard yeah um so if you come across trailers and you have to start doing inspections then you'll know how to do them properly yeah or to a standard at least yeah because a lot of employers expect you to know even though you don't know um yeah okay it's like a truck it's an axle isn't it but there are things about it that guys don't know and they overlook and it possibly could be a safety issue possibly but you know guys like me are always keeping an eye on to make sure that the questions are asked that have you done this and have you done that especially the younger guys just to make sure that they uh, to keep them on the toes yeah and this is what it is about at the end of the day like i said in the last video is challenge people challenge people it's really really important because then you 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 you're getting the the team to gel yeah and keeping them on the toes so that's it yeah basically i haven't made a a, a date with them yet but that will come up very very shortly i'll book some holiday um they're going to take me into the classroom and um teach me about things now i'm going with uh, a view a humble view because there are certain things I might have made mistakes on. So what I'm looking at as possibly correctional training for me. Yeah, <laughs> there's always that saying, you can teach old dogs new tricks. It's really, really important. I know some guys will say, yeah, I've been doing that years. I'm not fucking interested, but there might be things that, that need to be um, changed. Yeah, but I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but you will know. I will let you know and I will be open about this okay if i've made mistakes i've made mistakes i don't think so <laughs> because so far i've managed to, to, to get through quite a long way with doing this without any accidents and, and touch wood there won't be any yeah but you never know there's like i say there's always that warranty thing that's that, that's covered and if for instance a, a fleet is being maintained badly and they have warranty issues and they, those warranty issues are thrown out because of bad maintenance that means the company suffers doesn't it but anyway i digress it's, that's enough from me i could talk for ages about this but i think what we'll do is we'll spread this out over certain videos now the other thing uh, which isn't much of interest to the hgv guys is, is about doing the the car side of things i'm I'm actually struggling at the moment um, because I'm looking for uh, free parts from somewhere and I might have a German company that's interested. I've had a couple of Chinese ones, but they're really shit. Um, this German one might be interesting to get parts for, for doing over the fly project, but um, doing it from a prepper's point of view means that it's sort of down to longevity and maintenance which i think some guys are put off by it and some guys actually like it and i can't really do that do it uh full-heartedly because um my prepper mindset is more in mentally than it is um practical and and um collecting stuff and, and packing my house out with stuff just in case the grid goes down because i'm not like that i go out and i would do um a gorilla type tactics as if i had to take keys from a fleet board where i know they are take vehicles and fucking get out of it instead of using my own vehicle but i still want to teach people maintenance on cars yeah so um 
there will be a few things coming up with this and one of these is, is actually preparing your vehicle uh, in a way that is the same as they're just doing car maintenance but at the moment I'm still stuck because of finances at the end of the day I don't have the resources but I'm uh, looking at companies that come to me and assessing them um, to see if they're worthwhile and quite a lot of them are not because they don't have uh, the right type of websites so there is always stuff going on in the background I, I'll get emails all the time and a lot of it is utter garbage utter garbage but that's the way it is it's the world we live in now so anyway that's enough from me i've talked enough and i will see you in the next video take it easy and have a good weekend all right see ya